It's your girl, Renee Graziano. Real in reality with Renee Graziano. So today I have my friend, Chrissy Monroe. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. How How are you? I'm good. So I wore this t-shirt in honor of us. Girls rule the world. Run the world. Run the world. We we run it. We do it all. Um, How are you, Chrissy? Been great. Just busy, busy, busy. Tired. Tired. So I want to just, yes, I want to bring everybody up to like speed. So, and, and introduce yourself from, you know, your shows and what you, uh, we'll talk about serving looks, which is a phenomenal makeup and everything. And then I want to talk about profit because it's a, a really uh, important subject for me as well. It is for you. And we could, you know, elaborate on that and share whatever it is that you want to, but Chrissy comes from, um, well, no, that's not fair. You tell us. I know you're from Baltimore, correct? I am originally from Baltimore City. If you guys ever watched The Wire on HBO, it's very true to life. Mm. Um, So, you know, I moved out of Baltimore 20 years ago and completely started my life over in New York because I wanted to get into acting and modeling more, which I was already doing down there. But, you know, they're only going to go so far in Baltimore and D.C. So um, I moved to New York only knowing getting on TV. Wow. which I did, which was Love and Hip Hop, where most of you guys know me from yes. Love and Hip Hop New York season five. Um, so that's where most of you uh, viewers have seen me. Right. So I know uh, you also have a book that talks about your life and you have been uh, very transparent and you're a uh, very, um, but I also know how much we, uh, you, you know, as and I'm still, still changing, but you've changed from, then until now and um you know i see i i see it because i watched you I'm not gonna get along we're gonna meet one day and we're not gonna get along the personalities are so so big and then meeting you i was like wow she's really sweet she's not who television portrayed although you're honest as honest but you're at uh the villain you know what i mean so extra you already know it's not, it's not entertaining if we're not extra on TV, right? Right. And then you did your own show, Finding Chrissy. And that's where the change for me came. And you talked about real life um, things that women don't always touch on because they're uh, maybe almost like set taboo. Not today in today, but like it's still like a taboo, you know, but people don't want to talk about, you know, the pain or the trauma. Um, and you were very, very honest. Um you know, I respect that tremendously. So thank you for sharing that. Please let everybody know where they could get your book. Okay, well, it's not out yet. We're not done. I'm almost- oh, no, no, no. It's almost, it's okay. done, but it's not done. Okay. I'm my second um, ghostwriter, and I'm going to actually go behind him and rewrite it myself. It's, I'm, I'm going to be on my, what, fourth rewrite? Because it has, for me, I'm a Virgo. I have to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Um, and I'm thinking of the cover concept and the name. I've, got a few things in mind but it will be hard cover and soft cover but it is my autobiography since childhood and it touches on a lot of things um be, you know growing up with a, an abusive narcissistic mother um childhood abandonment issues being homeless as a teenager being the only um you know i guess i can't say i've been the only sober one but i grew up in a family of hardcore drug mm. addicts and alcoholics my sister died of a fentanyl overdose Sorry. um so you know i you know just growing up in an addictive family working in the strip club starting out as a stripper at age 17 as a minor when i should have been in high school and just basically playing the cards that i were dealt to my advantage with no support no real guidance no mentoring um way but you know i go through all those things in the book and the book is truly an inspiration to many people from all walks of life who may be going through something similar. Um, some of the things that I went through and can say, wow, she went through this too. And look at her now, because if you would have told me I'd be in the position that I am now 20 years ago, I may have believed you, but I, I left Baltimore as a stripper. I was wow. a stripper and I was dating a drug dealer who was murdered. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it was a lot of things. I was with him for 10 years on and off. So just a lot of tragedy, a lot of trauma. And, you know, I said, if I don't leave Baltimore now before I turn 30, I was 27. 
I'm never going to go. So I finally got everything together. And by the time I was up here, I knew two people, which were my dead ex's cousins from Washington Heights. We're still friends to this day. I got a job dancing at Sue's Rendezvous. That's where I met a lot of celebrities, athletes, and the rest is history. Like I was popping before Love and Hip Hop. Like I was already infamous in the streets. Dating right athletes and getting flown out before flown out was a thing on social media. So <laughs> right. all name names though. I don't ever no, no, names. Don't know nothing. <laughs> exactly. Um are all mentioned in my book, which will be out hopefully, let's realistically say in two months, by the time I get my hands on it and finish it. Yes. I'm, well I'm very excited. So I can I can relate to um, you know, the addiction part. I'm the only one that um suffers from addiction, depression, um, uh, which actually I was just re-diagnosed. So I, I'm not ma it's not MDD. So it's not major depressive disorder. It's situational, which I'm actually quite relieved. It's a little different for me to think about, but, um, you have, yeah. Like we talked about the, the sobriety thing, you know, when you were finding Chris, when doing your show, finding Chrissy. And I just felt like there was a, a, a connection not something that everybody wants to talk about and your honesty is is just it's um what's the word i'm looking for it's refreshing it's very refreshing and you have you know the tragedy but you've turned it into try you've come such a long way and you're doing so much more so let's talk about your nonprofit, which okay. um is survive to thrive global yes <laughs> Yes. And that, that for me is a sensitive subject because you do a lot for domestic violence and you want to, you want to help the next woman. So tell me about the nonprofit, Chrissy. Okay. So when I left Love and Hip Hop New York, I got involved with a younger man. He was very cute from Brooklyn. I was, this was not the guy I was on Love and Hip Hop with. A lot of people ask that. Okay. Um, and he was fine. And, you know, it was kind of just like a, did you see the Pamela Lee, Tommy, Tommy, uh, Pamela? Uh, Anderson? Anderson? Did you I didn't. That? No, I well, didn't. And it reminded me of my relationship that I got into because they met at a club. They were both wasted. And it was just from day one, sex, drugs, fun, rock and roll. And they were just every day end up living together. Then they asked, What's your favorite color? What do you like? To, they, months later. Just, you wake up and you don't know. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how it was with this guy. It's just we jumped right into bed, had sex on the first night. He was hot. Um, I'm at the height of my career. Everybody knows me everywhere I go. I'm doing red carpets. I'm getting paid for appearances. Everything that I came to New York for. But, you know, this guy was very jealous of me. And mm. I didn't see that because, you know, the sex was great and, me to drive me everywhere to help you know how it is when you got to do appearances you need help you need somebody right. to carry your stuff and take <laughs> pictures it's a lot people don't know what we go through they really <laughs> oh you i'm sorry need a sidekick uh, but you yeah. need a sidekick yeah you know what i'm saying and he was a hot one mm. so fast forward it turned into becoming very abusive he was paroled to my house oh and, you know, an ex-felon, um, mm -hmm. convict, ex-convict, gun charges, drug charges, which was not a problem to me. I dated drug dealers and criminals my whole life. Mm. That was nothing. I didn't judge. Um, so I let them parole to my house because, like I said, we were having sex two, three times a day. It was great. Everything was ah, ah, ah. But then I noticed a subtle change in him, um, which now I'm educated on domestic violence and abuse um now hindsight is 2020 like they say sure is it started with the emotional abuse which meant he started ignoring me mm. making me think i was it's called crazy making making me think i'm crazy like i did something wrong to them um narcissistic yeah yeah rejecting me sexually where i started feeling unattractive or, or just mm. to someone else then he would literally I, I you know talk to other women on the phone in front of me and then just say mm. it was his own girls you know, stuff like that. Then it got to be verbal. Then it became mm. physical. Oh. Um, now, most people say, why didn't you leave when he started calling you names? Well, mm. because that's easy for people on the outside to say. Right. Um, this guy also experienced a lot of nurturers. A lot of us feel like we can fix someone. We can help them, love them back to life. 
I'll help get them into counseling and this and that. And I've always really been that. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we were kind of trauma bonding, which is something I know about now, which yep. I didn't know what was then. Yep. So all this abuse and neglect was second nature to me because I grew up on pretty, mm -hmm. you know, the verbal, the, mm -hmm. the games, the ignoring the physical abuse. Um, so I didn't think it was that bad. No, you were so comfortable. It, yeah, it, it was normal to people yeah. that, I mean, I went through it with my ex-husband, but it yeah. felt almost, it's a very weird feeling. You know, I, I was, uh, and they talked about love bombing, you know, these words. And I'm like, what the hell is love bombing? Like gaslighting. I'm like, what did we talk? And then when they, you know, like you were just describing, when you start to describe that, you have women's attention because now we're, we're, rela I listen a couple things I'm texting you like is this that you know what I mean like you're like the go-to is this happening to yeah. me you know but yeah. I'm sorry can please continue I didn't mean to interrupt well, no 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 it's okay it me being on my living room floor with his his Timberland in my mm. face um both eyes black and blue I have permanent hearing damage in my left ear dislocated my left jaw cracked rib um because I hid my car keys from him because I didn't want him taking my car. He got angry. Um, mm. This is when he felt entitled to everything. He wanted, mm. yeah. He thought this apartment was his. He thought everything that belonged to me. He stole over ten thousand dollars worth of jewelry from me, mm. um, and reminded me if I ever call the police that I will pay with my life. He don't mm. have shit to lose. Mm. He will give me a buck fifty, which everybody in the streets knows that's the cut here. Um, he would have his female cousins from Coney Island call and threaten me. Um, they were going to jump me, telling me my, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a punk by any sense of the word. Right. But I was already beaten down in such a short period of time. This was only the, over the course of maybe 10 months with this guy. Oh. Um, mentally, the mental was worse than the physical, the physical heal, but the mental mm -hmm. that stays with you sometimes forever. I still have, I have, I was diagnosed with PTSD. Um, so, you know, I still have. I don't let it overtake me. I'm very mindful when I start feeling those kind of things and get that anger, um, mm -hmm. you know, but karma has played a big hand. Um, I couldn't get him out of my house. Like I said, he was paroled right. here. He kept telling me he had nowhere to go and it was my idea for him to move in. So deal with it. By this time mm -hmm. he was sleeping on the couch, but that last beating was the worst by far. Wow. Um, but he had already been gone right? because um, they heard me screaming for my life. I have photos. He broke my front tooth. I got veneers, but um, he went and did a home invasion robbery that went bad. And they ended up dragging him outside, beating him with bricks. And he had stitches in three places and his staples in his head. And wow. I, he was here. Head. So that was my chance to get his shit and get him out of my house. Right. So, let so me that ask was God. Right. That was no. God's God, listen. I kept praying, God, please let him get hit by a bus. Anything. Oh, like no, that. Chrissy. Get him out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I understand it, but you know what I'm I would leave this house for days. Oh. I was out looking to move, and I love my house. I've right. been in this apartment 20 years. Wow. I'm home. I've had big parties here, everything. I literally had everything packed up. I was trying to leave because he wouldn't leave. So right. that was a blessing, knowing that he was going to jail. So then when I went to press charges... Mm -hmm. The DA, who was a female, says, why didn't you come sooner? Ooh. Which now I know is victim, victim blaming. Some people never get a chance to come at all, Renee, because yeah, yeah, a chance because they don't have the courage or, you know, some people just don't report it ever because they're in fear of their, their abuser. So it was three months when I finally mentally was there. I started going to counseling at mm -hmm. my sister's place, which is a, a domestic violence nonprofit here in, in uh, Yonkers. I finally had the courage to go and press charges against this devil. Mm -hmm. And they told me you should have came. To right. So I got my lawyer. She came with me and we kind of put the pressure on them to press charges because they didn't want to do the paperwork basically. Right. And that's when being on TV worked to my advantage because they didn't want that bad press. Right. They didn't want that, you know, bad media exposure. So they reluctantly just rolled their eyes and press charges. They gave him three months. Yeah, that's the that's the sad part. With uh, you know, I uh, I've never reported uh, my abuse um, because I'm also you know programmed. That's it. You don't go there. Um, so I I I 
the the courage you had to do it. And um, I want to ask you, what was your turning point? Because you, you, I mean, honestly, it's it's amazing to uh, you know watch the TV, have this idea, then you meet the, you watch them, you know, film, you watch their show, and their whole life is changing. Like, you, and then you you have this nonprofit that you have for uh, about five years. You, I believe, well, right? Yeah, after I pressed charges and they only gave him the three months, which he was already in jail on the robbery charge, they ran it concurrent. So he didn't. I was so angry, Renee, that that's when I said, well, if this is how they treat people that are on TV. Imagine the regular woman that mm-hmm. has no voice and no platform. I need to use the platform that I, I have and the, the notoriety now that I have to do mm-hmm. some good with this and spread the word because this can happen to anybody. I never thought this would happen to me. Ever. Mm. I'm the tough bitch. I never thought it would happen no, to me, my father's room. daughter. I yep, I agree. Yeah, I, hello. How could it happen but to they me? Target successful women. Yeah, they mm. love to try to break down successful women and, and take us down a notch, but that's a whole other conversation. So I started Survive to Thrive Global um, five years ago. It's my fifth year anniversary. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. And basically, the main purpose is to spread education to domestic violence because it's something that most people don't talk about and, you know, and that's okay. Um, no one, it, it has to be when you're comfortable to come forward and some people yes. never get that comfortable, but that at least they know that there's, there's somewhere they can go on my Instagram and see that there's information every day to learn about what they've gone through, what they're going through and to network with other victims. And survivors. and it's, it's, that it's, alone is great. It is. And it's also a Chrissy, I think, you know, women with such a strong personality as yours and mine. And you could say, wow, they went through it. Oh, it's not, it wasn't supposed to happen to, you know, you don't think it's same thing with addiction. You don't think it's going to touch your family or touch your household. And it does. So again, it's amazing that you're helping the women that you are. And, um, you know, like I said, I've called you like, okay, Chrissy, what does this mean? You know what I mean? Like I'm on the side, like what, but see, I was foolish enough to make the mistake and, and the red flag. And I was like, no, it can't be. I still wanted to, uh, believe he was the person you met in the video. Oh, I did. I wanted to believe it. So have that hope that they're going to turn back into that, that great guy that you had so much fun with in the beginning. Right. But I think, like you said, you know, they, they, they look for women that have, and they think it's a weakness that that's the sad part. They don't realize how actually strong we are because we can leave. We have, you know, you're going to do something to me. I'm going to pay attention for me. I was maybe not in the right frame of mind. Um, because you know, my relapse, uh, really, I, I crashed like this. I like, I think I crashed and burned. Like, you know, I've crashed before and I don't want to talk about, it's not, that was, there was an actual car accident as well, but I crashed and burned mentally and emotionally that it took me, the, you know, the, the other thing is the isolation that the person. Oh yeah, that's <gasps> the first thing they do. They isolate you from your friends and family so they can gain control. That's that was the, the worst thing. thing. Oh yeah, the control. Oh yeah. And, you know, and they start to tell you, oh, all your friends want me, don't trust her. Mm. They'll lie and say they're, you know, they'll lie on your friends and say she wants me and your family doesn't care about you. Look at, look at this. They'll, they'll, Mm. master manipulators, honey. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm just, I'm just happy that uh, you, I, and many other women are in such a better place and just can, can take this in and use it to their advantage as well. Um, I also want to talk about, because I see the serving looks in yes. the back. And I <laughs> love that that um, cartoon is like phenomenal. Yes. Yes. So I have yeah, it on. Have serving looks, yes. yes. So this is yep. my Barbie pink that I have on. I yep. have over 60 colors and I have three different varieties. These are my, my mats. And then these are my royal crown collections with the necklaces. Love it. These are my number one sellers, my boss losses and then- there's so much that goes on media and it's not like the world we come from where you had to be in front of the person where people went out and met met each other like i yeah. mean i you know i'm guilty of it myself i own my stuff but if you could give um women like what would be your first flags that we could uh give women like what would be the three red flags 
You would say as far as what? As mm-hmm. in a, if you're in a relationship and you're dating, what would be your three red? You need one red flag. You're good at this. You know what I mean? The, you're number, like- one control. the one number one is control. The, okay. the isolation or telling you what not to wear. Your top is too low cut. Why are okay. you dressing like that? But you met me and I dress like this. They try mm. to change you. Okay. Um, you know, they don't want other, oh, I just, I don't want to your mind, that possessiveness, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and trust me, I know how to respect a man. I don't, I know how to tone it down when we're out. Right. I don't want to put him in a right. situation where he's got to get in a barroom fight because I'm right. dressed Absolutely. like a hoe. You know what I'm saying? With everything <laughs> out. I'm not going right. to go out and say, well, I know how to turn it down. But right. once they start making all those demands and changing you and, and acting, you know, isolating you mm-hmm. and don't want you going out with your friends that's the number mm. one number one okay that's 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 a really important one because control you know you're such a strong woman like I know control is one of my issues like I like to control such I think that's also my because of a fear that I have um you know I like to control it so I know which way it's going to go but there's in life you know in the real world Control, you're not supposed to control another person or a situation. It's supposed to just happen. So I, I, I like that one, control. Please tell everybody where they can find you. Um, serving Looks, your nonprofit. I want to lead every. Survivor shirts too now for, for domestic violence. Oh, I need that. I'm a survivor. Survive to Thrive Global shirts. Yes. Yes. So those are available on the Survivor Shop on the websites, both my websites, www.survive to thrive global.org, also on Survive to Thrive Global. Serving Looks is at servinglooks.shop on Instagram and on my website, www.servinglooks.shop. Um, I loved having you. Thank you. You want Chrissy? You got it. It is your favorite girl. And this is The Real in Reality. So I'm here with my very longtime friend. I call him DB, but mm-hmm. he's DBS. DBS. And we're going to talk about Godfidence. It's not only just his project, mm-hmm. it's also his merch. So fill us in there, baby. All right. Godfidence is a project I did with um one of my producer friends. His name is Big Jack, Beat the Days on the, um, Instagram. But yeah, we did a project, like a real rap, hip-hop project. And then we did, um, like, being independent, you got to find a way to get money just from streaming, from other things. So that's when we came up with the merch line. And the merch line money. Is, yeah, yeah. That seems the merch to be the coming great. conversation of the day is money. Always. Yes. Money. It's always about money, the money. money. One way the money. And we always get it. Got to get it. So we have such a long-time friendship. hmm We have, how long now? Mm. It might be 10. It might be, Yeah. No, it's longer than 10. We're going yeah. into 22. So Ooh, it's 12. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, you're 12. Right. You're absolutely right. That's right. So Rocking. I've actually been um, a guest at your party that we were a little worried about because I was stalked. <laughs> oh, you, and you're still stalked, right? Well, yeah, yeah, slightly stalked. She oh. got- oh, for real? Oh, I got to show it. Is it nice? I got to see that. I definitely yes, see it's that. crazy. But I love confidence because for me, God means everything. God means everything. And I noticed that as you've grown as an artist, that you always stay true. Yeah, gotta stay true yourself. I came up in church, you feel what I'm saying? So even when I took the wrong path, I always felt like God was still there, staring over me, watching me throughout everything that I went through. That's why you're still here. That's why I'm still here. That's why we're all still here. Every one of us. Faith. It's all tattooed all over me. That's good, see? What about the project? Um, tell me, tell everybody where they can find it, how they can buy the merch. Oh yeah, yeah. And the project is um, the project is available everywhere, everywhere, anywhere you can find your music at. You listen to music, Apple, Title, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube videos, and everything there. Um, uh, it's really like it's really hip hop. Like if you if you think about it, like if you really into like rapping, you want to hear bars, you want to hear have a good time. You feel what I'm saying? That's where it's at. God for this. DB on that. Are you and gonna I, be on it? Yeah, we yeah, need to talk shit. Yeah, yeah, I need that. I need to skip from you. Oh, you absolutely. Yeah, I need to skip from you. Absolutely, because you know I can talk shit. You definitely can talk shit. <laughs> if you can't do nothing else, you can talk some well, shit. Well, I can do everything yeah. else. Okay. <laughs> um, all about how, how'd you start? Mm. Where'd that come from? How did I start? Coming up in the street. Yeah, cause... Um. what it was, was it was kind of my way out when I was helping a friend. He was actually doing music. And, um, 
I took it to the next being in there, investing all my time and energy, just being around. I just started writing on my own. So he was always supposed to have been like the lead artist. And then I was just going to help him out, come off the bench type thing. But he ended up going to jail and mm. they left me to have the studio, everything. We had a show. We had an actual, a real live um, performance set up. And he actually went to jail like three days before the performance. So now I had to take on the whole thing. And after that, it just became my first nature after that. I just left everything in the past and went full speed. Yeah. Shout out to Tiffany Hasborn because Tiffany. without her, we wouldn't have met. Tiff's the goat. And I love things. Tiff. I actually talked to Tiff not too long ago today. I spoke to her. I, I called her about some sneakers because I have no yeah. idea about sneakers. I had my fiance do not have on the ring. It was an accident. I left it home. But I had to buy these sneakers, these Yeezys or mm -hmm. whatever they want. I'm like, Tiff, I need really cool sneakers for his son. She's like, I got you. Oh, that's fine. Tiff is great for that. Yes, 500. <laughs> I found them. Not from high. I found them in Flight Club. Oh, yeah, Flight Club. Yes. Definitely have. But, uh, for future references, I got, I got sneaker plugs. So you need one. Oh. So, you know, we make it Okay. Happen. Oh, well, when we're done with this, I got some pictures. All right, so I have no Sneakers. I got you. But you're okay. always fly. I always say, it. know all your pictures. Yeah. You're always all together. Love that. So the merch for me is, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm going to actually put it out on my own Instagram so you can find it through him and yeah. you can find it. Yeah. And this will be on Luxpedia. And then what I did also with the uh, merch is I did it with one of my friends. He has a clothing line. His name is Genji Gavins. And um, he like, he's really into the um, church too, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what it was, it made sense because it put us both on like show like even though we're not into the church scene like that, like I'm me personally, like it's still like runs my life. You know of what course, I mean? Prayer. So now we did it together as a joint collaboration and we just were running crazy with it. Good, because I want one that's it's his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. Jim, when you see that, yeah, that's what we're working on now. Yes, absolutely. It's from the Bible, so I'm I'm gonna Steal that from God, but I'll give back to the church. No, nah, exactly. I think I think we've been giving back to the church. The people I come from. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. But I'm really proud of you. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of everything. I'm looking around the studio and I'm like, wow, this is where you spend all your time, and you're Every always day. creating something new, something mm -hmm. great. I know DJ Self plays yeah, it. Yeah, DJ Self, DJ Envy plays it. Oh, I love DJ Envy. Drewski, DJ uh, Wala. So that I take care. Of, it's really been all over the um, all over the country so far. But right now, as, as far as like Hot ninety seven and um, Pop I'm from New Jersey, so that's like they taking care of the trusty area. They hold me down. I got to take you to Houston. I definitely want to go to Houston. Yes, my fiance owns a a, a strip club. Which oh, that's are, even better. Oh, so excited! Um, called Slingshot, so that you could perform there. Oh, we can do all that. We can. Yes, it. we're absolutely. actually in the process of um, I'm working on golfing this too. I, I I just started working on golfing this too, but I finished another project. It's called King of the Hill, and I'm dropping it at the top of the year. So after I drop it, that's when I'm running around to do certain spots. You've heard like it that. here. We, we we going to Houston. And he has an artist that could sing. Oh, my God. He's amazing. This young boy comes from the church. Oh, for real? I would love to put you guys oh, together. Set the set, set the studio up when we get there. We, it's on. Oh, you know I will. I'm with all that. So what else could you share from that gem that he just dropped about the beginning of the year? I'll have that out yeah. on this platform yeah. as well. Yes, we definitely going to do that. Um, I'm going to have merch for that, too. But other than that, I'm just happy to be here. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I get up every day. I work out. I make sure Shoulders. I do what I got to do. All that. I'll make sure I do what I got to do to um, stay healthy, stay in shape. We, we dealing with Corona right now, still two years later. Bullshit. And, um, yeah. Oh, it I didn't is say that. Is. It is what it is. I, I got vaccinated, though. How about that? <sighs> It'd be like that. You're not I the only swear one. they gave me a placebo. I get sick at all. I get sick from everything. And, and I you got been, this. You've been, you been good? I never got sick. Well, I, ha I had COVID twice. Okay. First time, I didn't know. I got in a little bit of trouble, so where they had to separate me from mm -hmm. people. The second time, I got... Mm. So, being that I traveled back and forth to use, and I'm like, let me just get it. Oh, so you got it after the two times? Yeah. Okay. But I got the strongest one, mm -hmm. and nothing happened to me. What's the strongest one, though? The Moderna. Okay, all right. Okay? Okay, okay. okay. Nothing happens to me. I'm like... Oh. But see, I also feel like this is just... This is me just think, us this is talking, talking, not that, that yeah. But I mean, just... I felt like um, I feel like 
the corona the first time was stronger because we did have deaths with it. Yes. This corona this time is like everybody's just dealing with the flu all at once. I, you know what? I'm not super educated in it, but I think it's obviously like a form of mm. a flu. Yeah, exactly. Something is out there. Exactly. For me, listen, I don't throw up. I threw up for five days. Mm. I mean, it was the greatest diet ever. <laughs> yeah, but it did help a lot of people lose weight. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people that actually passed. Exactly. One of my dear yeah, friends, she passed from, you know, she went, she got blood clots from it. Mm. I said, let me get vaccinated because at the end of the day, I have, grandch I have grandchildren now. Yeah, I have two, man. Yeah. I have two. I used to be in the Only strip club. One. We used to take you to the strip club. Yeah, we definitely and you used to have more fun than me. Oh, I know. So I would to imagine what you do with your man. No, <laughs> no. At his club, oh my God, he has no clue that I'm like that much fun. At his club, I'm like, why are you over there? Why? He's like, Renee, he gave me money. It's like, just throw it. I'm like, I don't do that. Meanwhile, he, imagine. I'd be, on, I'd be on stage. I'd be on stage. On stage for real. I'm like, I'm going on the pole. You'd yeah. be like, get off the pole. Jersey girls, great. Okay, great right. we could still do that. Yeah, great, I'm great, allowed great. out. Okay, then yeah, we we going outside one day. Yes, I'll, we, we'll take. Yes, showing you. Yeah, we can coming. bring the camera and all that. Yes, absolutely. Show all that. Absolutely. So I'm very, very proud of you. I will share um, all the information on your on your merch, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do some business. Let's make it happen. Yep. Love you. Love you too. Mwah. That's the real what we're investing in. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASA. NASA increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.